Welcome to the Temporal Temples. We're here for a good time. Hello everyone and welcome to the Temporal Temple Show Obituary. A little tribute to people I find pretty cool. My name is Stacey Kelly and today we have another member of the Kelly family. Not my immediate family and not the band the Kelly family. But indeed the wider reaching second name twin, Mr Frank Kelly. Boys, oh boys. Most of you will remember him as Father Jack Hackett yeah. on Father Ted on Channel 4. This is an immensely successful comedy. And so this wonderful actor was born Francis O'Kelly on the 28th of December 1938 in Black Rock, Dublin, Ireland. He died on the 28th of February 2016, aged 77. So that was last month. It wasn't too long ago. He was an actor from 1968 to 2015. To go off on a tangent, I remember at the end of the Werner Herzog documentary, Into the Abyss, um, it's quite dark, but at the end of the documentary, there's a police officer who says, how are you going to spend your dash? Your dash is, so say, you know, Frank Kelly lived 1968 to 2015, and on his headstone, between those two numbers, there will be a dash, and that dash is your life. And I thought, I thought it was a pretty cool way to, to describe your life as the dash, how are you going to spend your dash? And so interesting that that dash is no time at all, but for you, that's that's forever. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that Frank Kelly is a man who has made good use of his dash. Grew up in County Dublin. I really do think that this is a person whose father had a big influence on his comedy and his sense of humour, probably growing up as he was the founder of a satirical magazine called The Dublin Opinion, and he was the cartoonist also, so generally, you know, this guy's going to have a sense of humour. I, I am a cartoonist and an illustrator myself, and there is definitely an absurdity to it. Um, so, yeah, I can imagine that's probably really at the root of where it began for Frank Kelly growing up in this household, but The Dublin Opinion was... a Irish satirical magazine published monthly from the years of 1922 to 1968. The co-founder, along with Frank Kelly's father, was Arthur Booth and writer Thomas J. Collins. This magazine launched on the evening of the Irish Civil War and it was apparently carefully balanced between Republicans and Free Staters. The satire was apparently gentle, except when it came to the British. wonder why that was. Just looking through some of the pictures are brilliant. You know, you can actually buy compilations, 40 years of, of the Dublin opinion, which is, these are satirical graphic novels in a way. For instance, a light-hearted image that I like is, you have the mother stood at the fireplace speaking to the children and she is pointing to the wall to which there is a checkbook pinned open on display, pride of place on the mantle. And the caption with the image says, and that's the checkbook your father fought within the economic war. <laughs> and a sketched aerial view of Ireland with a signpost stuck in it saying shortly available underdeveloped country unrivaled opportunities magnificent views political and otherwise owners going abroad yeah. some of the covers were just great in uh, 1928 Booth passed away Kelly and Collins took over the project as joint editors by mid 1960s it became less popular and Kelly and Collins were forced to close it up and I guess it wouldn't matter that that magazine was losing popularity. Because meanwhile, young Frankie, poo, his career is starting on a trajectory. Come a long way from his pantomimes, landed his first film role in 1969 Italian Job alongside Michael Caine. He played a prison officer. And then, of course, the real deal, a children's programme, Wanderly Wagon. Here comes, here comes the On, what's this? A bloody prog breakdown? children's program Wanderly Wagon with co-stars Eugene Lambert and Nora O'Mahony. Ah! 
They are not doing these things because I, as a great Dr. Asko, I'm not wanting them to do these things. <laughs> if I am wanting them to do these things, they can do it. Can your wagon cut grass? Well, of course it can't cut grass. But well, I, as a great Dr. Grass. Astro, am inventing the self-cutting grass. He played this role for over a decade, bringing joy to children, playing a number of characters, and also pitched in with writing this content that makes children laugh. During this decade of children's entertainment, also worked on Hall's Pictorial Weekly, and I bet this was just awesome for his father, as it was an Irish satirical television series. And so, Papa, I did good. <laughs> it featured satirical sketches, and the sketches were on actual current news stories and um, politics, popular culture, and so on. It's the real job in the AAC. Oh, There's big money for it, you see. More than Jack Lynch gets. Three. And expenses. And free travel. And duty free drink on the area plane. There's the thousands in for it. Thousands? Oi, Mr. Hawkins. And, and there's only 15 jobs. Oi. You know what I'm going to tell you, Mickey? There'll be someone killed before this is over. <laughs> there will to be sure, Barney. They'll go to one another over them 15 jobs. <laughs> boys, oh boys. So yeah, it was quite a charming series. It was like a little bit of Fry and Laurie or something like that. It was funny. It was. It did have a charm to it. it this made Frank Kelly's face a household face. And then of course we have the era of Father Jack Hackett in the comedy series Father Ted. He was a man of very few words. In fact, four <laughs> a man of four words. Uh, four words, they are feck, ass, drink, and girls. And occasionally you get a what? Or women's knickers? But feck, ass, drink, and girls, that was this man's fucking job. That was his job. To say those things. <laughs> feck, ass, drink, drink, and girls. girls. Whereas the real Frank Kelly was nothing like this man. It couldn't be more far removed from Frank Kelly's actual persona. He's, um, he's reputably full of stories, serious, and apparently it just does occasional bursts of laughter. And there's a great quote from Kelly, but there's a great quote from Kelly, which is, I like humour, but I'm very suspicious of people who laugh all the time because they never listen to what you're saying. They always have another agenda and they generally have no sense of humour. The most untrustworthy body language I know is that of the person who laughs all the time. People with no sense or a very limited sense of humour, I'm very wary of too. Because it's not a sign of great intelligence to be without a sense of humour. If you've no sense of irony, you haven't a great decision-making capacity, because you must see all the possibilities of the downside of any decision. Oh, and I love that. Yeah, and I, I love that and I get that, you know. The, more, the older I get, the more absurd life becomes and... My sense of humour almost feels like a, a barrier with which to protect myself um, because things can get too absurd. Apparently the crew would not share a table with Frank Kelly during the filming of Father Ted when Frank Kelly was in makeup because obviously that, that flaky skin would crisp off his face and land directly in the food, which is not great. There's something about being ostracised from the lunch table that's just so tragic. I know people who were forced to eat beneath the dinner table because they were messy eaters as children. And I also remember a documentary following this handful of men's experience with Tourette's. And one of the most shocking parts of it for me was just the dinner table situation because one of this guy's tics was to just spit the food directly back out across the table at whoever was sitting opposite. And so he, he couldn't eat with the family. Like that, his tics ostracized him from the lunch table, much like Father Jack's flaky skin. At that stage, I was drinking over a pint of vodka a day. Yes! Yes. All I could think about was where the next drink was coming from. Drink! <laughs> I didn't give a damn about my wife, our kids. Yeah. But no, with all of your help, uh, I'm coming through it. I'm just taking it one day at a time. That's good. Thank you, Ronald. Now, I noticed that we have a new member of the group with us today. Adam. Would you like to tell us your story? In my earliest laughing fit that I remember is, is 
to Father Ted um, when I was younger watching it. And oh, a lot of comedies, there's time frames for them, you know, and they live in that era. Whereas Father Ted, I just, you know, I could actually watch Father Ted today and it still carries and, you know, it was great. You know, there's a super group of comic time in it, it's finest. And um, everyone has like a Father Ted bit that they remember. A lot of it was just the moments, like hanging. It's not just the dialogue. Sometimes the gaps between the words and physical acting in that series just are some of the strongest elements of it. <laughs> Frank Kelly also has a brief music career. In 1982, he released the Frank Kelly Christmas Countdown. It was a big hit in Ireland. It was number eight in the Irish singles chart in 1982, and it peaked at 26 in the UK singles chart in 1984. So George Orwell missed Missed that bit. <sighs> and so it was a sad loss, and Frank Kelly was an amazing actor. But not to worry, because his wife of 51 years had five daughters with him and two sons, and they went on to have 16 grandchildren. Oi, Mr Hawkins, and there's only 15 jobs. Oi. There are a lot of Kelly descendants, little Father Jack. And so, yeah, that's a great place to leave it, I think. Thank you for listening to the Temple Temple podcast. I'm Stacey Kelly, and to you, Frank Kelly, rest in peace.